Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are so happy to have you here today. My name is Donna Merckx, and I am the Director of Museum Experience at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame and Gaylord Pickens Museum. And we are so delighted to have you here today to join us for our virtual artist talk. The Oklahoma Hall of Fame preserves Oklahoma's unique history while promoting pride in our great state. Through each of its programs and the Gaylord Pickens Museum, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame honors our state's rich tradition by telling Oklahoma's story through its people. So we are here today as part of the um, exhibit events for our current exhibit slate, which features three exhibits by three amazing female Oklahoma artists. Um, so please come on out and see the exhibit. February 9th is when the exhibit was installed and it will be up through April 15th. Um, these exhibits and the, this exhibit event are supported in part by the Oklahoma Arts Council, which receives support from the state of Oklahoma and the National Endowment for the Arts. So we are very grateful for our sponsors for this exhibit. Now, normally we like to do our artist talks actually in the gallery, but we're experiencing just a tiny bit of inclement weather here in Oklahoma. So we are doing it all by Zoom and virtually, and we are also pushing this out on Facebook Live for the first time. So if you um, have friends that missed it, please be sure to tell them to look for it in our Facebook feed. Um, also with us today, of course, are the artists and Emma Leach, who is our Manager of Education and Outreach at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame and Gaylord Pickens Museum. So she is going to be watching for your questions here and also uh, on Facebook Live. So uh, please send in your questions for Vainos. We're so excited to have uh, Vainos here with us today. So the Oklahoma Hall of Fame believes there are no limits to what is possible. Every day, we celebrate the legacy of inspiring Oklahomans with all generations because Oklahomans are changing the world. So the inspiring Oklahoma we are Oklahoman we are celebrating today is Vainos Arabian. Hello Vainos, thank you so much for joining us. For Hello everybody. Hello friends. Discover total love of art, freedom and creative expression as a small child and developed a passion for painting beginning her professional art career at the age of 10. She has earned a BS in Applied Chemistry, a Bachelor's of Arts in Painting, and a Master of Arts in Art Studies. Mm -hmm. After completing her master's degree, she immigrated to the United States in 2010 and became a naturalized citizen in 2017. And we are so lucky to have her here in Oklahoma. Welcome, Bainaz. We're so excited to see you and to have your wonderful art on display in the Tulsa World Lorton Family Gallery. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, friends. And Donna, thank you so much for having me. And I'm so excited uh, to share my stories about uh, my paintings. I just uh, wanted to uh, tell the stories behind the pieces that I work for this project. Uh, I'm so excited. Anyway, uh, I start from the first piece that I did uh, for this project. Uh, it's uh, Giti. Yeah. Yeah, Giti in Farsi means uh, the universe, the world, and uh, my mother's name is Giti. And uh, Unfortunately, she was uh, ill in 2020 and she passed uh, on March 27th. And I thought uh, maybe for this project that uh, I call it Depth and Roots of uh, Bignos, um, I thought it's a better I started to paint uh, the portrait of mother. So, <clears throat> This start was good, but 
emotionally, I was under pressure because I know that someday, maybe in near future, she's not with me. And I should tell you, she lived with me for five years. We had good and bad memories. Then I thought it's better I leave it, I mean, this piece that I started. I leave it and I thought I can uh, go back to it maybe later. And then I started the second piece uh, that there is a three phases, Donna, uh, my granddaughter picture, uh, the painting, I mean, that uh, it starts with abstract, uh, no, the other, yes. And I started the second piece, uh, Sophie, my grand, the only granddaughter. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. She was uh, one year old uh, and she was uh, diagnosed with a type one diabetes. And when I started to uh, paint uh, her portrait, and, you know, as you see, there is a different phases. Uh, when I want to start a painting, <clears throat> I have a vague sense. I don't have any idea. Uh, for this piece, actually, I knew I'm going to um, paint the portrait of my grand Sophie. But, uh, you know, a huge canvas like this, 60 by 72 inches, is, it's not easy. I uh, usually start with um, applying uh, paint and splashing colors. Mm, uh, actually, I can tell you with a uh, abstract structure. Then I uh, add some lines and I try to do her portrait. <clears throat> but this kind of splashing red color reminds me of, you know, blood, especially when she was uh, at the hospital and she was in DKA. Again, I was under pressure, um, emotional, and I said, okay, uh, just, uh, it was challenging work for me, exactly the piece that I did uh, for the first portrait that I did for my, actually I painted uh, my mother's portrait. Uh, around one or two months, I just, you know, apply paint and I just try to uh, turn the canvas and think about that, and um, but ended up to the landscape, as you see. And so there is a three phase, uh, the main three phase, but uh, between these phase, I take photo uh, for uh, just uh, study, just see what's going on on this piece. I can tell you maybe I have between phase one and phase two, two, 20 uh, small steps and between uh, portrait figurative of, and portrait, I can tell you uh, with the landscape 20 phase, 20 step, it's, it was challenging. I think because uh, maybe because of the memories I had and uh, my feelings, you know, so Sophie, you see, ended up to the landscape. And for the Gitti, just ended up to this. Yes, yes, to the abstract painting. As you see, there is a portrait of my daughter here, you know? So it's not totally abstract. It's partial abstract. Yes, exactly. So my pieces are not a pure 100 totally abstract because I have, you know, story behind them. Maybe it comes from my culture. 
and also comes from my individual culture that I want to tell something um, to my audience. And it's, you know, my life story that always, uh, or unconsciously, I transfer on. And uh, yeah, I'm just checking the time because I don't want to go to details, but I try to explain the process of, you know, this exhibition. This so okay. can, oh. I, can I clarify something for our audience a little bit? Uh -huh. um, when you're talking about this piece, GT, um, are you suggesting mm -hmm. that the portrait of your mother is kind of where this piece began? Are these two separate pieces or is this underneath um, your uh, abstract piece okay. here? Underneath, okay. yeah. I, okay. I uh, show the process of, you know, the piece that I did. Uh, you know, I, with a wake sense and with a abstract structure, but for Giti, really, I wanted to have uh, my mother's portrait on the canvas, but um, she was ill, and actually, she was my role model in my life, and I wanted to have, uh, you know, at least her name or her um, painting uh, at the museum for this project, because I'm uh, showing it the depths and roots of Behnaz. And my parents, uh, it's normal that uh, for kids, uh, their parents are role models. And, uh, for me, as uh, a normal person, you know, I think uh, my father and my mother, especially my mother, was my role model. She was uh, strong, she was a smart. And she encouraged me to, oh, you know, go to university. Even, uh, you know, I had a husband, uh, two kids. Uh, she support me. And uh, because of that, I owe everything to her because uh, now I live, uh, you know, in a different level. You know, I really love my life. I really, um, have a peaceful life that I owe to my art. That's uh, the person who recognizes that I'm interested in creating in art. Uh, I can tell you just Giti, my mother, uh, did for me. So uh, let's start uh, talk about this piece. Um, I created this piece in June, 2020. Yeah, Lady Justice. Um, again, uh, you know, I started to splash colors. Unfortunately, I had um, some uh, experiences about how people judge me or how easily judge others, you know. So I just wanted to show my feelings and express my feeling on this piece. Um, most of the time when I have a problem with the attitude of people, um, really I'm shocked and I'm speechless. I don't talk back. I go to my studio and I try to create a piece. For example, this piece is one of he said that I did that you see Lady Justice. And uh, the other piece is fusion. Fusion, I chose this piece for uh, this exhibition because it's February and it's uh, love month. And uh, I try, you know, uh, to choose especially this piece and you know as you see how I chose it, the title 
who match with the form and the concept. Uh, red is symbol of the passion and love. And I chose, you know, just warm color in for the composition. I chose cold, just touch of cold colors and the value of the colors of warm color are so close to each other. Exactly like um, somebody find um, their soulmate, they are, you know, match together. And they are, uh, as a unity, you, uh, you, you can call a couple because they have love and you cannot separate, uh, you know, you know, you cannot separate them. Yeah, I, I just try to uh, transfer this kind of feeling of love or passion and how we are, when we are in love, we are restless. For example, uh, I uh, painted uh, the concept of love several times. I do remember several years ago, uh, I painted a horse that she was in love. I tried to have a good composition for that. I didn't uh, draw the horse vertically. I tried to use awfully uh, composition and uh, splashing the colors uh, shows how this uh, horse, or it doesn't matter, it's a horse, it's a, you know, human being in love. I just want to show these, uh, you know, feelings, the true visual elements and true colors. And and also when I want to choose uh, the titles, you know, it's a beautiful uh, phase for me. Uh, for this exhibition, I chose the title of Depth and Roots of Benos when I wanted it to uh, email my uh, presentation. So I chose the title title first, but most of the time, when I'm almost done with the piece, uh, I choose, uh, you know, the title and always, you know, the process and um, uh, the process, you know, uh, give me a good guidance to choose a good title for that. Uh, for example, I have a self-portrait, uh, maybe you can find um, on social media, I call it scratch. And, uh, you know, the texture of the, you know, face a little bit off. And I said, oh yeah, I see some scratch on it. So I'm going to uh, choose uh, scratch, you know, for this painting. Um, and also, I should tell you, self-portrait, uh, it's uh, uh, fun for me because when I have um, commission work, uh, I should uh, try to, uh, I should try to obey my clients and I should try to show them that I wanted to respect your taste. So, yeah, this is uh, yeah, the self-portrait that I did uh, for this exhibition. And uh, when I do self-portrait, I feel a little bit relaxed. And I think uh, it's a good feeling uh, because when I look at my picture or uh, look at the mirror, I see, Oh, who is Behnaz? And I want to show the soul and the essence of Behnaz. I just, uh, I don't want to just copy the surface of uh, Behnaz. I want to paint Behnaz from inside out. You know what I mean? Um, 
also for the other pieces I try, the commission pieces, I try to paint or draw people from inside to out. And uh, maybe it looks uh, sad, I don't know, but uh, one of my friends, uh, Sherry, told me um, they are not sad, the self-portrait. Um, they look serious. And uh, um, I think, uh, yeah, maybe they are serious, but uh, you know, um, maybe they are sad. Uh, I don't um, deny it because I didn't have a full life. I had uh, ups and downs in my life. I went to, I went through revolution uh, eight years uh, war between Iran and Iraq, um, different, you know, and uh, in Iran, especially a uh, green movement was the worst. So um, I decided to move here. I don't want to make it a political session now, but you know, um, these days, everybody cares about every uh, everything that happened in the whole world. Uh, so uh, uh, I did a few pieces also uh, landscape. Uh, one of my friends who lives in Zahra Kologar, she is a great talented uh, photographer and uh, these photos that I um, chose as a reference really remember, uh, reminds me of my homeland and, um, and I'm so glad she uh, let me use them as a reference. But as an artist, uh, I thought, yeah, it's better I show people that I am here. And um, as you see, my pieces are expressive realism because I want to show you people as an artist, uh, just uh, look at my feeling about it, this uh, picture. Um, for example, uh, I did a pink uh, sky for the DR number one. DR number one. Oh yeah, and um, yeah, I I think um, I talk about my title of the exhibition. I talk how. Oh, uh, you know, uh, I work on my pieces. I show you the process. So uh, you can uh, find two kinds of approach, uh, abstract, partial abstract and expressive uh, realism on my pieces. I have 11 pieces here. I have also two one is self-portrait that I talk about that. And the other one is Raha that, uh, this is the self-portrait that I did. But uh, Raha, yes. Uh, just uh, two weeks before my mom uh, passed, uh, I was under pressure because when um, I opened my eyes in um, the morning, I asked mom, mom, open your mouth, open, open. And I tried to feed her and uh, I wanted to make sure uh, she didn't pack her foods in her cheek. So I was under pressure. I was intense and every brush stroke that I applied for this piece, I was crying, but uh, I, felt a relief after, you know, doing that. So as you, when I do something, when I uh, create a painting, uh, they are exactly uh, interconnected to, you know, life. And uh, sometimes, you know, 
I cry like this piece when I do. Uh, sometimes I dance, you know, and it's a great feeling when I, uh, you know, listen to the music and I try uh, to be happy and dance and like uh, the free brush stroke like uh, the best music that I like it to dance with that was number six Shostakovich I love it so I get some energy some inspiration and all these people ask me what's your inspiration comes from I say my it comes from my imagination my you know daily interaction with other people uh, like this piece that I did, you know, I was, you know, upset and I tried to show my anger, how people judge, insult, curse, uh, you know, others. So I think you see uh, some few lady justice, it took two months again. Um, it was challenging works for this, uh, you know, exhibition that I chose yeah uh yeah I think um yeah I chose a few pieces of uh, the project uh, that I did for my uh, uh, bachelor degree for al Zahra University in Tehran uh, as you see uh it's a self-portrait self -portrait and I use mirror at that time, uh, you know, I thought maybe working from um, photos, it's a kind of cheating. <laughs> but uh, here, I, I think everybody use photos as a reference. So I think there isn't any problem as long as you can uh, work and create art, that's important. Yeah. And also, um we, let me show a few pieces of that i chose this is uh you know i can uh, the title is i can every, every time that i want to choose a title really i'm picky to choose a suitable so as i mentioned several times because when i was in iran uh you know I didn't care about the title always. I say untitled title. And but here I call this one immigrant that I like the story behind that because I think uh, immigrants like a flower, like a stem that you uh, separated from the root. It's still beautiful but maybe if you compare uh, when it was in the root, her beauty was different, exactly like uh, immigrants, I think. Um, you know, it's difficult, it's not easy. Immig 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 immigration is not easy, adaptation is not easy, uh, but thank God um, I did this process easily because America is a, a cosmopolitan country. People are so friendly and um, support me and my art and it's amazing. And I appreciate you guys and, and maybe I have this triplet also uh, for the exhibition. Yeah, and I call it the yep. VR. Benaz, I'm particularly interested in hearing more about this triptych. Can you share a little bit about um, what this is and, and what the name means? Because I've noticed that you've used it um, on quite a few of your landscapes. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, um, the figure that I use, in the middle, uh, it's a kind of triplet that uh, I try to have a kind of connection between uh, 
modern art, contemporary art, and classical art. Uh, for example, I have a book that it shows the Persian uh, paintings. They have, if you look at them, they have a beautiful story behind them. They are narrative paintings. And, um, you know, sometimes I think it's better I, uh, sometimes I think it's better I do a different, you know, theme and uh, it's better I try a different style. I don't want to push myself because I think everything happens naturally. For example, when I was in Iran, my works influenced by abstract figurative. Show you something like this. And when I came here, my atmosphere is changed. My lifestyle is changed. My character is changed. When I was in Iran, I was introverted. I'm much better now I'm outgoing. So I'm just telling you, I'm going to not stop my comfort zone. I love portrait and I know how to cope with a portrait, but I want to try different, you know, um, techniques, maybe different um, subject matters. So this is the one that I tried. I tried, uh, you know, before also. And so uh, it comes, uh, this uh, figure comes from uh, the uh, ancient Persian paintings that I used because it shows, and the title of this painting is Unveil, but for my triplet, I chose Diar because when um, the lady passed the way from, you know, just, mm, I remember we uh, read at um, school that, uh, um, you know, many, many years ago, or maybe uh, some countries, Arabic countries, they still have a whale on, on their face. So when she is uh, passing the whale, she, she see how a, you know, critical word, really, uh, again, I don't want to make it a political session, but uh, still, you know, we, have social, political uh, issues in Iran. So I just wanted to show it and I try to uh, have um, classical art and uh, modern art together. And um, I really like the contrast, contrast colors, contrast theme, contrast, I think it's um, challenging for me, but I try to do my best to cope with that. This is uh, about this uh, triplet. Wonderful. Thank you, Baynaz. Um, we have a, a question from our audience. It's, um, what is the best piece of advice that you've been given as an artist? Uh, I think uh, you should be Consistence and persistence. Uh, I say something about myself. Uh, I work hard and I'm uh, working six to eight hours per day. And I don't care I have problems. Everybody, have, everybody has uh, problems in their life. And I am one of them. So if I say today I don't work because today we have, you know, cold weather, my mother is ill. No, uh, my friends uh, know me. We had a workshop class here and my mother was uh, in her room and I didn't uh, let 
any problem that I had in my life stop me. And for this, uh, selfies that I did for my uh, project for my bachelor. Uh, my ex-husband uh, didn't like it because he was so picky, sensitive about the smell of, you know, material colors that I use. And he, I do remember, uh, in the morning, I woke up and put my easels because at that time I didn't have a uh, stereo. And uh, he said, you know, these, um, you know, stinky um, materials, uh, it's not good for our body and our kids. And, you know, I was so also, I, I should tell you. Uh, then so, again, I started crying and my older daughter looked at me and she was sad, but then my um, husband, uh, I mean, ex-husband um, left our house. I again put my easel and set up my colors and I started painting and my daughter was shocked. Mom, you were crying. Are you going to continue painting? I said, yes, I have to be consistent, persistent. I cannot have, you know, a gap or, you know, I don't want to stop. I have um, a project for my uh, degree, so I should work. I have to work. So uh, I'm telling you, so please work every day. And if you want to be a professional artist, if it's fun for you, that's totally fun. And, but always I say, Van Gogh says, art demands dogged work in spite of everything and continuous observation. So when we have, um, as a role model, so you have to work, work, work. That sounds like great advice, Vainos. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. Um, would you like to tell us what you're embarking on now? What's your next project? You know, uh, I think this project that I chose with this exhibition, it's very interesting to me and I'm going to work on it. And maybe I, uh, just put number one, number two, that's uh, and roots of Benaz number yet, maybe um, next year I said number two and I create uh, more pieces related to this subject matter. Great, and so um, are you going to be, I mean, I'm really fascinated by this idea of you um, creating paintings that are underneath and then building a process and going through it are you documenting each section of that do you ever do you ever wish you hadn't proceeded and and that you could go back to the previous artwork oh yeah yeah you know it's so uh sensitive when you want to say it's finished and sometimes uh, yes I apply colors in the, for this selfie, uh, which very selfie that I did, joys and pains number three. I, fine. Let me see. I did several steps and I took some photos and I tried to compare step by step and see which uh, phase was the best. And sometimes I'm melting into my art and I, I cannot see anything and I cannot, uh, you know, critic my art. So it needs uh, to be left for maybe a few days. So, uh, yeah, and I was looking for this piece. So 
as you see, there is a thick color on it because I didn't have, you know, a plan that I'm going to have this color combination. And also I can tell you uh, that my daughters both uh, helps me a lot. And also when my mother was alive, uh, I asked her mom, what's your idea about this photo, um, this painting? And um, she used to talk about my art and it was interesting. And and uh, she talks negative about my piece. For example, I have a piece, she had um, a portrait. She was a portrait with a hand like this. And my mom said, does she have headache? I, you know, it was negative, but I thought it's, it's good because I thought I don't want to convey this kind of feeling of headache, you know? <laughs> Um, but these days I ask uh, my daughters, what do you think, which um, color combination you like? And for this piece, my older daughter said, mom, I think the hair is harsh, rough. I said, okay, I respect your idea, but I think it's good. It's, it's rush, that's totally fine, yeah. So I asked my daughters um, to tell me uh, your idea, if you have any suggestion, but it's mm, not necessary. I just uh, do what uh, they wish, you know, they wish I had maybe soft uh, hair, but I really like it rough and with these expressive lines. Yeah, I just, sorry, Donna. I just remember you asked me the process. And yeah, sometimes um, I see the previous, uh, you know, uh, stage, uh, previous painting was much better than now, but I lost these opportunities. So these possibilities that I had a few minutes ago, but it's exactly like my life. I make a decision, maybe I change my mind, but oh, maybe I'm happy with uh, this kind of making decision. So I always compare creating a painting with my life. Uh, when I call it, it's finished, it's finished, yeah. But sometimes when I, uh, apply colors, I see I'm creating another piece, another art that is separate with the previous stage. The previous stage was piece, an art piece and now it's another one. So I should be aware when I should call this piece is finished. So we're just going through really quickly and um, showing a, a quick quick screenshot of the artwork that Bainaz currently has in her exhibition, Depths and Roots, on display in the Tulsa World Lorton Family Gallery at the Gaylord Pickens Museum. So I invite you all to come out between now and April 17th to see this work. Um, I think one of the things that we miss when we're doing this on Zoom is that um, the size of the pieces doesn't really communicate. So if you if you take this piece, for example, it's uh, 60 inches by 72 inches and um, really allows you to, to fall into the piece uh, while you're in the gallery. Um, so please come on out and see us. The other thing I would like to let you know is that we currently have a web exhibit, a virtual exhibit of Bainals as a work um, available, and we will be putting that link in the chat so that you can uh, explore this a little bit more and see, um, you know, zoom in and really see some of these details. 
before we go, um, Benaz, is there anything final that you'd like to share with us and our audience um, about your work or yourself um, and or your, your processes? Uh, I think I talk a lot. <laughs> Sorry if I make you guys tired. I know it's in the morning and you will have a lot of work to do. And thank you so much for joining uh, me and listen to my stories. Bainaz, I just want to say thank you again to, to um, you for being here. I want to share that um, we're receiving from in our um, chat some comments, beautiful art. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts about your process and your work. And let all of our, our guests know right now that in the chat, and we will put it in the comments on the Facebook, is the uh, link to Bainaz's virtual exhibit. So um, we have one more question before we go. Uh, do you receive more gratification from completing a perfectly commissioned portrait or from delivering the portrait to the owner? Uh, would you please say again? Sure. So which makes you more excited? Completing the portrait or actually handing the portrait to the person who commissioned it? Oh, uh, you know, both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, everything that related to art and painting, every process, everything is enjoyable. And I love my job, my profession, and it's an amazing life that I have. It's so because of that, I recommend people just uh, engage, involved with art. So I'm telling you both because uh, it's my passion and every stage, every, uh, you know, uh, everything related to this, it's my love. And, and one, final, one final comment I wanted to share with you, Benaz, was um, she's wonderful. Thank you for bringing her on today. Loved hearing about her life and the process of her art. And I think that perfectly sums up how we all feel today. We're so grateful to get to learn more about you and about your work. And I think it just makes it so much more rich when we explore your pieces to understand the layers of process there beneath them. So everyone, please come on out and see the exhibit. And Bainos, thank you so much for being here today. And uh, we hope everybody stays um, safe and warm uh, out there. Uh, and and uh, be sure and check out Bainos's virtual exhibit. Uh, the link is in the chat. Thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone. And thank you for supporting Oklahoma artists and the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. Goodbye.